But there's one more huge energy source that I hadn't looked into yet, nuclear. This plant could power up one million people per year. You can see the barriers here. Now you're going right along the protected area of the plant, uh, but quite a bit of concrete uh, measures that were taken after 9-11. But since Fukushima, people are worried that nuclear isn't safe. Comanche Peak is just 150 miles from my house, and I needed to get a better look. Exactly. So we're, we're getting a peek inside here. You can, and that's where the equipment all comes in. And one of the things that's nice about this view is that you can see the thickness of the concrete right. of the walls of, of, for containment. And what you don't see there is the rebar, and it's rebar throughout that concrete going all the way up. It's we're not talking feet. rebar. No, I mean, rebar, it's two, three two and, rebar. and a half inch rebar. Like yeah, thickness, arm. that's correct. Right. Basically like your arm. What happens if something flies into a structure like uh, that? Well, you player? know, there would be damage to the outside structure, of course. Uh, the equipment inside would be protected. We're in tornado country. Absolutely. What happens? And, and, and you know, these, these, uh, these structures are designed for the worst case tornadoes. We're talking about 300 mile an hour uh, hitting directly at this equipment. Structure would be protected. To 300 be mile an hour. 300 mile an hour, yes. Scott, we just entered the radiation controlled area. Yeah. And one of the things you were given was a dosimeter to measure your radiation. What you'll note is that it's reading 0.0, .0 millirem. Okay. And it'll continue to monitor you throughout uh, your stay in here. Gotcha. So, for example, I've been working in, in the nuclear industry for 28 years, mm -hmm. and I picked up probably in the neighborhood of 200 to 300 millirem throughout the 28 years. So the whole time? The whole time, yes. And that, you said, was a normal background for a year for a person? For a year for a person, that's correct. Hey, they're huge generators. Absolutely. There's four of them, two per unit. So you only need one during an emergency. But again, from a redundancy standpoint, we have a backup. Running on diesel. They run on diesel fuel oil. The tank is located underground, a little different than what Fukushima had. And we also have a day tank of fuel oil that's located above, gotcha. above the diesel. And one of these generators could run the critical equipment. It would run all the equipment necessary to keep protecting that core and that fuel. So they're not running now. <laughs> no. What are we hearing? Ventilation. Ventilation system. You'd know when it's running. Yeah. <laughs> What you see here is the Unit 2 spent fuel pool. You see Unit 2 containment. That's a containment yeah. for four and a half foot thick concrete right. with rebar. It's all located there. So you, you remove these spent fuel rods underwater. Correct. Water keeps it cool. That's correct. So I'm getting, I'm wanting to check my... <laughs> check your dosimeter. It would be the right thing to do. My rims here and let's see. 0, 0.0. That's correct. That, that's, that's what I would expect. That's less than I would get if I'd been outside all day. You could stand here for the next hour and be reading 0.0. 0. 0. 0. Yes. The dangers of nuclear power, although they're real, are less than the dangers of not having sufficient energy uh, with all the problems that brings. They're less than the dangers of coal. Mm -hmm. Um, they're looking desperately for natural gas, but all fossil fuels produce carbon dioxide, and the world is seriously worried about increasing even further the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So everything has its dangers, and as we begin to appreciate that, we realize that nuclear looks better. Yeah. But there are other things, getting the nuclear reactor to be less expensive. A nuclear reactor, unlike a coal plant, you, 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 the fuel doesn't cost much. Right. I mentioned a tenth of a cent right. uh, to, to, to get a kilowatt hour. The expense is up front. You know, when you build a nuclear plant, you need to put down, say, five or six billion dollars 
just to build the plant and get it running. For how before, big of a facility? Say for a one gigawatt uh, okay. electrical plant, okay. about $6 billion. So you have to put down all that money out front, and then you're relying on the revenue stream from the electricity you generate over the next 30 or 40 years in order to become economically profitable. But if you look at technologies to generate electricity that can operate at scale, that have low emissions, uh, and are available now, not 20 or 30 years from now, nuclear comes up awfully high on the list. In fact, it's very hard to see how we're going to, uh, the world is going to meet its emissions goals mm -hmm. without a significant fraction of nuclear energy. So what would a system with more nuclear energy look like? Since France has no coal, no oil, they decided that there are no other solution that go full nuclear. So nuclear energy was born out of necessity, period. And so in about 25 years, France went from almost no nuclear energy to now about 80% of electricity is made out of nuclear energy. The safety record of the French nuclear system has been impeccable. France has the cheapest price of electricity in Europe. And the CO2 footprint of France is minimal now. So the advantages are tremendous. And one of the reasons actually there is so much acceptance in France about nuclear energy is because we can tell the public that we have a solution for waste management. Their solution is recycling, which they do at La Hague, a plant that could power 17 million people per year. Here, spent fuel from France, Japan, Germany, and other countries is reprocessed into new fuel. And you okay. can see now the first step of the process, the fuel rods moving right. uh, out uh, the cask. He's lifting the whole... Yes, very, very slowly. Very slowly. Very slowly, yeah. and you, you yeah. can see it on this uh, control screen. How many of those do you do every day? Uh, it's one cask per day. One cask per day. Yes. One of these fuel assembly is producing, producing electricity for 25,000 people. Inside, you have 96% uh, of material that we can reuse to produce a new, uh, a new fuel. This is very interesting. So 96% of the fuel is reusable. Mm -hmm. Why isn't that being done all over because the world? Because they have uh, fresh uranium, you know, reserve of fresh uranium. But lots of countries are interested by recycling now because, of course, we can reduce the volume of waste mm -hmm. and because we can uh, have a reserve of energy. And we know now that we will have in the future problem with the reserve of energy in general. So this is a giant swimming pool. Yes. <laughs> but we don't swim. How, and, and how deep is the water? The deep of the water is around 10 meters. 10 meters. Yes. And it okay. acts as a big cooling system. I'm looking at basket after basket after basket. How many baskets are stored uh, here? We have 19,000 fuel assemblies stored Chips. here at the Zelag plant. 19,000? Yes. That's a uranium it's, mine. Yes. It's something like that. It represents six months of oil production of South Arabia. This facility, yes, the it's uranium really here big, represents yes. the equivalent of six months oil production sure. in Saudi yes, Arabia. Yes, exactly. It's a real reserve of energy. In the US fuel, you have 95% of the uranium, 1% of plutonium, and 4% only of fission products, which are the final waste. So we vitrify them, put in containers, and in this interim storage. Each, uh, each uh, French people is producing five grams of right. fission products, vitrified waste, uh, per year. Per so year. this is the equivalency of uh, uh, 20 cents euro coins. <laughs> so that's the, that's the fission waste for one person yeah. for one year. Yes. In this room, we have 400 uh, pits. 400? 400 pits. And we have three rooms like that. 1,200 holes, and two is one million people. Yeah. So you're looking at 600 million people of waste equivalent. Yeah, 
600 yeah. million people yeah. in three rooms this size. Yeah. So it's a very, it's a very elegant solution yeah. to recycle and reuse yeah. the uranium yeah. and the plutonium yes. and just separate out those few things yeah. that are not usable. Yeah. Even more than zero emissions, it's this astonishing concentration of energy, far greater than any other power source, that's nuclear's biggest benefit. But that's also why it must be handled with care.